Max Mashmaster here with the, uh, I hate saying this name, the retrosexual Anthony Green. Um, used to be known as all good Anthony Green until he thought he was too cool for people and stopped returning texts and started acting like he was from 1990, even though he was born in 2000. So, and Brody Lee, I'm sorry, excuse me, Brody King taking it to Christian Casanova right off the bat with these hard chops. Uh, Max, I don't think I'm too cool. I just have a beeper now, and it's a lot harder to respond back. Anyway, caving in Christian Casanova's chest with those chops. Christian Casanova trying to get out of there, trying to get away from the corner. Stokely Hathaway you know, peeking in there, trying to give a little bit of advice, but he's not going to be able to give advice over chops that sound like that. And I think that Christian Casanova's chest is ripped wide open in a giant meal all the way across the ring. This one isn't gonna last long if it keeps going this way. Coast to coast, setting him from one side of the ring to the other. Oh, Jeez. big time corner lariat. Big oh. cannonball from the big man, pulling him out. This one's over, I think. One. Uh, just Christian, just stay down. Try to, get, try to get a little bit of advice, but he's just wailing in pain. Now, what, what does Stokely do in a situation like this where, like, his, one, one of his prized fighters, one of his prized possessions... And look at Brody King just, just watching. He knows that he's got him in his sights. He knows that he's got him in a good position to end this match quickly, get that payday, and get on his way. Oh, oh wait did a he minute. crotch himself? I gets him over the top row. Oh, I bet gosh. you that uh, Stokely Hathaway, you know, said, just wait right here, wait for him. He's got to come in with something. Oh! Big choke slam on the apron! Hardest part of the ring, maybe? Absolutely. Well, if you get closer to that apron, you know, sometimes the, the thin mats don't make it all the way. There's exposed boards, there's exposed metal, and you can go right up your spine. Stokely just watching this happen. Just, ah. Slightly in awe. He's holding his ears right now because he hears those chops raining down on the chest. Christian Casanova headed for the door. That chop was a lot more forearm. <laughs> it was hand like normal, yeah, yeah. so really able yeah. to push him back. Still, it didn't make off. one of those studs, they say, but it's it was just heavy, heavy chop on the chest. Oh, oh. come on! Referee Juicy Jerry Beauregard did not see. You will call him Squishy. That is his name. Uh, no, I won't, because that's his actual name is Juicy Jerry Beauregard. We had a conversation out back. Not many people did, but I had a conversation with him. I don't know how much damage those, those stomps are doing, but he's starting to throw everything at him because he doesn't want another one of those chops. Good for him for being able to stay on him right away. He took advantage of a situation, and now Christian Casanova's on top of this. Brody, Brody King trying to, trying to keep himself away from Christian Casanova, trying to, uh, oh, he's got the hair, come on. That is really stupid hair, let's be honest. It's blue. Why do you have blue hey. hair? I, the person like, like Brody, a are you going to go up to Brody King and say something like that to him? To rip your face off. Which is why I'm where I am, and that's why he is where he is. You mean status-wise or positioning? Position. Status-wise, I'm way ahead of the game. Oh, my God. Two feet right to the face. But Brody King is making his way to his feet. Oh, did you see the chest of Christian Casanova there? Chest is just beaten raw. You know what they say, once you go raw, you can never go smack down. Don't say stupid things. You sound like an idiot. <laughs> Hopefully Christian Casanova isn't uh oh my god isn't doing anything tomorrow because I think with a chest like that you can't be seen in public. He won't be able to wear a white shirt for two weeks because he'll be bleeding through it. So normally Christian's more of a ground and pound kind of wrestler. Yeah, he's gonna ground and pound someone like Brody King. No, which is why he's trying to suck the life out of him right now with this chin lock. Yeah. It seems like everything he does, Brody King is to his feet. Oh, a big like back six, elbow six from each side. Yes. Oh. oh, going for a spear in the corner, catches nothing but that turnbuckle. Driving him right down, off the ropes. Oh, beautiful. Kick right to the jaw, going for a super kick, catches it all the way through, Miss Alaria up into a code breaker like maneuver. Beautiful. Double chins on both sides of the jaw. Ooh, real close. Very close. Real close. I would keep. I would put your fingers down, uh, Christian, and go for a move because oh. Brody King is to his feet. Oh no! Super kick didn't catch all of it. Brody King down. A second one. He's not down. He's not going down. 
Oh, oh he's asking I'm for a that good chain. 30 feet away from Christian Casanova, and I can see the imprint of Brody King's hand. Referee's got a chain. He's right in front of you. Do Take it. Take the chain Do away. Oh. Good thing that Brody yeah. King also saw the chain. Yeah. Ah. Uh-oh. Oh, this does not bode well for he one Christian Casanova. He'll lose the match. Just run. Ah! Oh my God! Larry, it's over! Pile driver! One, two, that kicks out! How did he kick out of that? He's driven right on top of his head after a vicious lariat. It is hot in here, but Christian Casanova is on Dream Street right now after that yeah. pile driver and humongous lariat. Up, oh, swear words. Goes for that lariat again. Going Able for to that. catch him. Oh! He calls that dirty Diana. Oh! Hits him with the knife. Oh, he can't get the big man over. Let's go, Christian. Trying to shoot the half use in his forehead. One, two. Oh, Brody King, smart maneuver. Did not having to use any energy, just reaching out for that rope. Yeah, Brody, Brody taking the easy way out. Yeah, can't kick out of a, a, a scissors kick. Work smart, not hard, uh, Mr. Retrosexual. You see how I won the match tonight? Fair and square, clean as a whistle. Oh, yeah. He's going up top. He's known for his famous frog splash. How famous is it? Tell me. Tell, he's, I want he's beaten guys like Donovan Dijak with that same move. Has he beaten Brody King with it? No, he might now. We'll see. Oh, he's back down. Oh, catches him in a bomb position. Why would you put your legs up like that? Why would you? Oh, oh murder. Vicious all the way through. Good. Off the ropes. Good. Big oh. set on from the big man. Chris Casanova to his feet, though. Stay I don't know down. if he's, he's just oh. trying to. Uh, just Stokely Hathaway Pushed into the, the fans. Yeah. Christian Casanova. Oh, another Looking chair. Up. Come on, guys. Bloody Referee's got to get some. Yeah, come on. Suicide Brody dive. out. Oh, big oh. chair to the face. Shade to Sabu at that one. Brody King in. He's, he's, he's loopy. His, weight, his legs are wobbly. He can't even get his, his stance. Oh. Scissor kick off the top. Brody King's out. I can't believe this is going to happen. Not like this. Come on. Gentlemen, we are here live. It is I, the only man in professional wrestling that matters, MJF, and I am sitting here with... You know my name. It's Max Smashmaster, and I hate your guts. Fantastic. Okay, right now we have Jessica Havoc, someone who I uh, genuinely despise, uh, against Jordan Grace, who, uh, you know, she's okay. She looks pretty good to me, and she looks very, very strong. I will give, I'll give Jordan Grace that. She's very strong, but let's face facts here. Jessica Havoc, she's, she's a girl. She's, she's a girl who's not going to take smack from anybody, but... Hold on a second. Uh, and I, oh, and that's uh, what I'm talking about. She just, just proved, she just proved your point right there. She's a runaway for a train. She's mowing down uh, Jordan Grace choo -choo. easily and picking up with, with the greatest of ease. You know, we at the beginning of the match we we got uh, Jordan Grace's you know bench and we got her squat. But what do you think Jessica Havoc benches and squats? Or just here's the thing. Okay, I've wrestled Jessica Havoc. It wasn't fun. Uh, that's why I I hate her guts. She doesn't play fair. She is incredibly strong and. She knows it. That's the issue. You're going to sit here and talk about playing fair. Yeah, I never cheat. Cheating's wrong. And there's Jess again, just cheating, using her weight leverage. Uh, have you ever heard of uh, affluenza? Have you ever heard of affluenza? No, I have not. Uh, I believe you have affluenza. Well, I'll tell you what. You know what I'm affluent in? Not cheating and being a good wrestler. How's that? Uh, oh, okay, okay. We'll get back to the match here. I'll tell you a little bit of about Affluent. Oh man, Jordan Grace actually. She really, she knocked her right down. She just took Jessica Havoc off her feet. 
I mean, I could obviously do that too, because I'm a man, but still impressive. Impressive. You know, I, I made my name a, a beating up a few women solo, Darley, uh, Kimberly. You know. Okay. So, but I never wrestled either of these two women, and I don't think I would want to wrestle either of these yeah, two women. You're probably better off for of not wrestling them. Absolutely. These girls hit hard, they play hard, and they go hard. And I'm not taking away anything from the people that I've wrestled before, but I do not want to get in the ring with Jessica Havoc, especially after what I'm seeing so far. Here's the thing. I don't like to repeat, pre, repeat myself. Repeat, 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 repeat myself. Uh, but allow me First to. First time talking, I see. Allow me to. Um, Jessica Havoc's a dangerous girl, okay? Uh, when I was in the match with her, I understood that in order to get her down, you got to chop her down like a tree almost. You got to go limb to limb. You can't just attack her full force. It won't work. You need to have a game plan against Jessica Havoc. Absolutely, and I totally understand that. Oh, she's here's the strength run. again from Jessica Havoc. Well, Nelson, she's hooking those legs behind her thighs. They're really putting the pressure not only on the neck, but the lower back here. Will Jordan Grace be forced to tap out here by the Havoc death machine? Oh! Breaking Jordan Grace's back, making her humble. The Sheik would be proud. Lock on the camel clutch. This one is over. See, but this is the part that's uncalled for about Jessica Havoc, okay? A real woman would have went for a pin, but not her. She wants to add insult to injury. She thinks she's hot stuff. You I'm sick of it. You don't I'm think she it. knows that Jordan Grace is a threat and that that one backbreaker is going to put her away? What do you mean She threat? knows she's a girl. She's a girl. Stop it. Listen, I know I know you're a bit chauvinistic, and you grew up on, on Long Island. Uh, what, were you right up 495? What exit were you off 495 up on Long Island? You know, the higher the number you go, the more uh, money you have. I know that for I don't sure. need to get into but it, 5,000. But listen, you can't be talking about women, especially women like Jessica Havoc and Jordan Grace, who could easily beat you in a match. No. Nope. You nope. know they are nope. a match nope. for you. See, when I wrestled Jessica Havoc, the only reason why she won again was because she cheated. But right now we're seeing Jordan Grace pumble back Jessica Havoc. Oh, kick Jessica right Havoc. to the gut. Kicks, Kicks her back up. Right on the point of the jaw. She needs to go for a pin. She needs to capitalize here. And I'm frozen in fear. Uh, she is making eye contact with me. I don't like it. And she walked away, thankfully. Uh, both of us didn't. Yo, watch, watch your mouth, OK? I didn't even think she knew who you were until uh, Yeah, we've, we've, until she, yeah, we've until had her fight. backs and forth. It's a, it's a love-hate relationship. I hate her. She loves me, because who doesn't? I think she loves hating you. I think she just loves hate in general. Did I just see what I think I saw? I have never seen Jessica Havoc taken off her feet in such a manner in my life. I could have done it too, though, just saying, just throwing it out there. That is 100% not true, but the point here is Jordan Grace just gave Jessica Havoc a vertical suplex, and now the playing field is even. Now, Jessica Havoc, she's not used to being taken off her feet like that. We're about but to Jordan Grace is around. back to her feet already. Jordan Ow! Oh, boot to the face! Up and over, Another using her agility. Blood curdling scream from Havoc. Only a mother can love it. Squashes her in the buckle. Ow! Torch screw elbow down on Jessica Havoc. Jessica Havoc is going outside. This girl is on fire. Coming through. Ow! Taking Jessica Havoc down for the second time. This is a stellar matchup between Jordan Grace and Jessica Havoc. But let's be honest, my match is going to be better. Two. Ooh. That's Only a two count. Down for Jordan Grace. You know, uh, maybe because she took a lot of punishment, but she needed to get her shoulders across the shoulders of Jessica Havoc. If you're going to keep someone down like that, you really got to apply yourself on every single pinfall. She's got a little half, standing oh, half now. No way. Lots Not even remotely possible. No one can pick up Jessica Havoc. Like, oh! A series of clotheslines, the back and chest area. Oh, the way up to an air raid crash here. Drive, God, Jordan God. Grace down. That's it, it's gotta be over. One, two, two. oh! Jordan Grace out at two. I don't even know how she got out of that. Great counter there by Jessica Havoc, driving Jordan Grace down to the mat hard with that air raid crash. No, that's Jessica Havoc's problem, okay? She can't stand the task at hand. She's more worried about what the fans think. Not concentrating on the match. It's sad. I it's think sad. she hasn't gone to the fans once. I do what not do you mean? know. She was screaming before. She screamed, but she wasn't like looking to the fans. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. All the way up in the wheelbarrow. Oh! Jordan Grace face plant. One, two. Able to drive her through with that uh, rolling victory oh, roll. You can tell Jordan Grace just getting desperate here to keep Jessica Havoc she down. She needs to not worry about that referee. It's not his fault. Jessica Havoc is an amazing opponent. But who can blame her? That ref seems crooked. I never trusted Tony. Never. Is that his name? Yeah. I didn't know. How did you know his name and I didn't? I, I know everything. I'm MJF. Yeah. Jessica Havoc whip reverse right into the corner. Squashes her like a bug. Going for a second one, though. Trying to put Jordan Grace away here. That's the stuff I was talking about, pandering. I'm getting real sick of it. Yep. Getting I, I low. think you think you may be right there. I'm always right. Six pound. Did... Oh! 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 One, One, two, three. She just, she just beat Jessica Havoc. My God. Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Labby, and welcome to Maine's Pro Wrestling History. The living legend Larry Zbysko is one of the all-time greats in professional wrestling. The protege of Bruno San Martino, he got his start in the ring in 1973 and wrestled his last match 42 years later in the year 2015. He was also a very popular wrestling commentator for World Championship Wrestling. Along the way, Zabisco would hold numerous championships, including being a three-time former NWA National Champion. He held the WWWF World Tag Team Championships with Tony Gurria. In WCW, he held the Tag Team Championships with Art Anderson, and it had an amazing feud with Steven Regal over the World Television Championship. He was also a former two-time AWA World Heavyweight Champion. However, Larry Zabisco's final wrestling championship was when he held here in Maine for the Maine-based All Out Mayhem. On November 10th, 2010 in South Portland, Larry Zbysko defeated Paul Cannon to win the All Out Mayhem Heavyweight Championship. He would go on to hold that title for an amazing 528 days until April 21st, 2012, when in Gray, Maine at the New Begin Gym, Larry Zbysko would make his final championship defense ever. That night, the extreme strongman Gino Martino, with his manager John Cena Sr., defeated Zabisco to win the championship when John Cena Sr. interfered on his charges' behalf, costing Larry Zabisco the title. Now, I was at the show that night in Gray. There was probably only 35 fans or so in attendance, and I consider myself lucky that I sat down with Mr. Zabisco for 30 minutes before the show started, and we just chatted about wrestling. It's one of the best experiences I've ever had with one of my favorite wrestlers. I'm Michael Labby, and this has been Maine's Pro Wrestling History. We are now halfway through question the answers here in Westbrook, Maine, with a match that could main event anywhere in the country. I am the JT Dunn, joined by my compadre, Ace Romero. Yeah, this match could main event anywhere in the world. I feel in the world, man. AR Fox versus Jack Swagger representing the people. I'm gonna, I'm pretty sure, first time ever. Yes. First time ever. Fox and Jack Swagger share the ring here. Sold that event in Westbrook, Maine. Again. That's awesome one. because this match can happen anywhere in the world, but tonight's happening in Westbrook, Maine. It's happening in Westbrook, Maine, and it's happening halfway through the show, which means it's only better from here. Oh, great oh, takedown. Looking for the angle on Curly. Swagger able to stop himself before eating the turnbuckle. Look at the strength on him. He's a big boy. Oh. oh, stare down. It's gonna be the true definition of the power and speed of Jack Swagger through his amateur wrestling ability. Everybody knows how dynamic he is, but when you're wrestling a man like A.R. Fox, there is no preparation that is correct. He is unique and enigma. Ace, I know you know better than most people how incredible A.R. Fox is, especially here at Limitless Wrestling. One word for A.R. Fox, describe him unpredictable. You never know what kind of fox you're gonna get. You never know. 
in a, a match like this where the styles absolutely clash, A.R. Fox, this motivates him. I, I mean, we're buddies with him. We know how he is. He loves competition. He loves to outdo himself. And Swagger is still trying to uh, put all the pieces together here in independent wrestling. And he finds himself here in Westbrook, Maine. A win over Fox. That's big. That's really big. Fox, the guy who's at, who tackled the beast, he took you down. He's, he gave you your first defeat. Swagger comes in and beats him. He's climbing the ranks real fast, day one. Oh! Not able to avoid the buckle that time. Two feet, look at Swagger Bomb already. Oh, for it. Ah! They got it! Upset! Oh! We see the Kathleen Hawaiian Mitchell ringside. Jack Swagger's wife. Fox. Ruben, Fox. husband. Fox, Fox rolls the Where's Fox at? Fox How on the floor. Often? How often do you see Aaron Fox roll the floor for, for safety and cover? Only when he wrestles me. Yeah, yeah, you better duck. <laughs> About four and a half minutes in here, we're seeing Swagger hit the Swagger Bomb. He, oh, jeez. He threw Fox in there and took him right off his feet. Swagger ringside throwing those punches down. The height difference allows Swagger to be throwing from an elevated position, which, if anybody knows, getting hit in the temple directly uh, from 12 to 6, that'll put you to sleep. They don't look, they don't sound They're effective. Fox, but they are. Oh, here it is, Jawbreaker. Maybe neckbreaker. There it is. The height. Oh, look at this animal AR Fox. Here he is. Smart go right back into the cover. He got him down. Don't Let's waste go. any time. Jack Swagger is a seasoned veteran. He is very He's done seasoned. it all. Literally, he's done it all. World champion at a level a little bit above us and comes back down and now he's trying to show the man of the independence, A.R. Fox. I mean, he calls himself a living legend. He is certainly an innovator, the innovator of the low main pain, the low main rain. So Jack Swagger is hungry, man. A.R. Fox, Fox has been uh, put, put some dinner on the plate. Uh -oh. Got him up on the shoulders. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Very, oh, just drops him. What a very uncomfortable way to fall backwards. Different world for uh, Swagger. He's done everything in the world. He's been at WrestleMania. Oh, walks right into that Gabi Geary. Gabi Gabi. Gabi. I'm actually Hornswoggle. It is called the Gabi Geary, which is the inverted back brain kick. Uh, I thought you were a wrestling connoisseur. I thought uh, you would know that. Air Fox. Whoa. Air <laughs> Fox's offense is so impressive because while. 80% of the damage happens to you, 20 still happens to him, and he still gets up. He has just made him. That's fluid. the thing. How do you beat somebody like that? I don't know, man. I wrestled him like 90 my, times. My win loss record against Arrow Fox is staggering in defeat. I've, uh, I've, only, low main? I've only solved that puzzle once. Low main? Swagger, I can assure you, Jack Swagger has never experienced anything like low main pain. Oh, but you know what? The power here. No! Oh! oh! On his head! That is a human being getting demolished. Here it comes! An all-American athlete. Referee almost got demolished in the way. All-American slamwich right now. Grand slamwich. Oh! Look at him go. And the people here in Westbrook. They are on fire tonight. Yeah, place your hand over your heart. Yeah. Lead the people. Lead the people, let's get it right now. Jack, lead the way. It's the ropes. Other side. Oh, oh. Inside out, upside down. No, oh, very close. And here's, a, here's an interesting dynamic of A.R. Fox. He's like Gumby. He gets bounced around, he keeps bouncing back. Gumby? He, Gumby, man. His, you know what Gumby is. Everybody listening knows what a Gumby is. A Gumby is an AR Fox. I was going to say Inspector Gadget. Flubber. He's, he's, just, he's just bouncing around. And he's able to survive in the depth of matches that. I love that line. That some performers aren't. Uh, they're not ready Fox, for. He gets Fox. out of the way by rolling under the bottom rope. Total Fox faction. I have never seen that. He loves a lung blower. DDT. Oh! oh! Spikes him. Spikes him right on his head. Cover. Oh. Fox is gonna put he's gonna put Swagger through the ringer. His offense is unpredictable. You never know what you're gonna what you're gonna see out of him. We're sitting here. We've wrestled him. He's beating the crap out of both of us. 
We're anticipating one move and then just like that, something completely different. But the height that he got on that DDT. Now, that, that's the benefit of being able to jump up that's and down. That's crazy, that's crazy. Now, he's, now he's, he's bigger than Jack Swagger and he's throwing Swagger right down on his head, putting both their body weight, compressing the neck. I feel either way, man, that's it. It's got upset feeling on both sides. Fox, known to wrestle the best, coming off some impressive victories, not only in limitless wrestling, but in the professional wrestling. But Swagger, oh. Swagger coming in the underdog, eating feet. Oh, Loves Matrix missed him. Oh, oh, he learned from his mistake earlier. There it is. That's it. If he's able to get position and keep him away from the ropes, AR Fox will tap out. And that's one way to keep this match on the ground. Keep Fox from flying and diving and jumping everywhere. Well, it's true though. Take that ankle away. Not enough pressure to push him far enough. Cover! Almost snuck one out. Schoolboy. Swagger misses. Loves a cutter! Oh my god! Oh my that god! That elevated spring back cutter! No! Oh, Ace, that was closer than ever. What was that? Springboard Tommy Hilfiger. Thank you, Porn Swaggle. Uh, it's a Swaggle, all caps. Oh, Swaggle. Swaggle. <laughs> Yo, this match, this match is Look crazy. At this. Look at this visual. Swagger, out of breath, holding his body in pain, suffering, looking up at AR Fox, while the American flag <laughs> drapes in the back. Hot sauce. Now, some sauce for you. Oh yeah, see, this is why he needed that ankle lock to do a little bit more damage. Fox, still agile, loves the 450 or the Swanton. He's in! 450! That's gotta be Kane! No! Ropes! And there, there's the presence of a true wrestling veteran. That was the energy it takes to exert a kick out. He's big enough, he's bigger than AR Fox. He can reach, grab the ropes, stop all the momentum. Oh, Catalina Wymix, what's she doing? Oh, the foot of Fox. Oh no. Fox getting distracted. Oh, the little I'm, Fox I'm not, trot and the Fox I'm not, trot. I'm not going to say it's a, a quality he possesses, but Fox will kick her right in the face if she's getting involved. Will he? I think he will, man. Here in Limitless Wrestling, he will right, do here it. Here comes Jack Swagger. Oh, the question the answers. Oh. Well, the question is Dental Bill in a minute. Yeah, man. Hopefully they got. Oh no. Oh no. Jesus. Oh, I thought he was about to wipe out Catalina here ringside. I would have changed the whole dynamic of this match. A successful Tope Suicida from Fox tosses him in. It's a suicide dive. We're in America. <laughs> I wish we had Thank three Thank you, microphones. Swoggle. Thank you, Swoggle. Coming in, springboard. No, oh, he misses. He misses. Oh, no, look at him. He's pulling him off the ground. No! He's gonna tap! Oh my god, this is about to be a huge upset. AR Fox is gonna tap out to Jack Swagger. He's gonna break his head! Aaron Westbrook, he's tapping out! He tapped! Holy shit! Wow! You know what? The power rankings here in Limitless Wrestling were just released. LimitlessWrestling.com, I think after tonight, I think the rankings are about to shift. We have a new powerhouse in Limitless Wrestling. And here he is, the real American, Jack Swagger.